Welcome to r slash best of Redditor updates, where OP's teacher hires her as a naked maid. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash relationship advice. My lecturer hired me as a naked maid and is uncomfortable now, but I need him to get over it. I'm a woman in my early 20s, and he's at least in his mid-30s. I work for a cleaning service that offers nude or lingerie-clad maid service. There's no intercourse or touching, but if boundaries get crossed, then the client is struck from the client list. The client can ask for a type, as in hair color, race, weight, age, gender, but they can't pick a specific maid. Their maid is assigned by the company. Both the client and the maid have the option of using a fake name, and pictures of either party are not provided. Any institutions the clients and the maids are linked to, like school or work, are also noted, so something exactly like this doesn't happen. All of this is done for confidentiality. Clients can request after the first session that the same maid comes back, but that's it. I'm explaining this to show that it's impossible for him to have requested me or known it was me beforehand. I got a message from the company saying that a nearby and anonymous client had requested a lingerie-clad maid and I was his type. I went to his house in jeans and a t-shirt with lingerie underneath so he didn't see anything. I knocked on the door and my lecturer opened it. I realized what had happened and said the agency typically filters these things out. Clearly there was an error. I said that I could stay and be professional, or I could get him another maid, but whatever he chooses, we should both just forget this. He asked for another maid, so I called the office, explained, and left. The office said that, due to human error, no one checked that we're linked through the same school. I had to go into school a few days ago along with some classmates, and we ran into him. He was awkward, uncomfortable, wouldn't look me in the eye, and refused to even directly address me. We ran into him again later that day, and it was the same, if not worse that time. We also had some classes at the end of last academic year, after the mix-up where I ended up at his place, and I was similarly ignored, though I attributed this at the time to the online format of the classes. This would just be one of those things, except that I have classes with him all next year, as well as private meetings with him to discuss my studies. These have to be done with him, are compulsory, and can affect my grade. While I know that I can act professionally, I'm concerned that he can't. Because it's been several months and he's still not past it. I'm putting a lot of time and money into my degree, and if this is indicative of how he's going to act for the remainder of it, I feel that I'm not going to get what I paid for and that my grades will suffer. I don't know how best to progress. I can't afford to let my grade be harmed, but talking to him might make things even worse. Any advice? Then, about a month later, OP posted an update. He reported me! I booked a meeting with him during office hours so I could clear the air, as was suggested on my last post. Then, I followed that up with an email that simply said that, since school was starting back up again and it's my final year, I'd like a chance to meet with him to talk about my dissertation and make sure he approved of the topic before I launched into it. This is something that's completely standard and everyone else is doing it, but somehow, this was enough to cause him to panic. The maid service I work for also offers completely clothed maids. So, from what I can gather, he's gone to the university saying that he paid for a fully clothed maid and only went through this service because of their extensive vetting. But when I showed up, I offered to do it naked in exchange for extra help on my dissertation. He says that he said no. Obviously, this is BS, so I got the recording of the phone call that I had with work and gave it to the university. Which was enough to stop them investigating me, but I couldn't get his payment records to prove he paid for lingerie due to the anonymous payment system. And even if I did manage to stay here, I would still have to be in his classes because they're mandatory. But at the same time, my university had basically said that they can't put me in his classes after this because I've essentially been accused of sexually harassing him. He must have reported me the second that I sent in my meeting request, because I got the email from the person dealing with this literally less than a week later. I have no clue what he's thinking! I'm assuming that he thought that I would report him and decided to get ahead of it, but even that makes no sense because all I did was request a meeting. Whatever his logic, I'm dropping out. I'm one year off completing my degree, so I've submitted some inquiries about transferring to a nearby university. But because this happened right at the start of a new school year, it's going to be 10 times harder than it would be if this happened over summer or last year. 
The only upsides are that I've not actually been expelled or suspended, so I won't need to explain this to anyone. The university seems fine to just let me go quietly, and another lecturer is writing me a reference. The agency has also said that they'll blacklist him, and they share this info with other services. So, hopefully, he won't be able to do this to anyone else. I'm adding that I've had a free consultation with a lawyer, but I will not be pursuing legal action. The best case scenario, if I win, my name is cleared and I can stay at the university, but my profession will still be outed. I'll be shunned by classmates and staff members alike, and my lecturer will continue to be a dick to me. And I'll be staying at a university that's confirmed that they'll throw me under a bus to save a weaselly prick. Even the best case scenario will also earn me a black mark next to my name in academic circles. The really tragic thing about this story is that of the four parties involved, OP, the professor, the school, and the maid service, OP is the only one who didn't do anything wrong and is also the only person who's being punished for it. Right? OP handled this as professionally as she could have. The professor, on the other hand, lied and tried to ruin her career just because, what, he's, he's afraid it's going to happen to him first, I guess? The university refuses to back up OP, even though OP proved that she was innocent. And if the agency had done their freaking job, this would have never happened in the first place. I will say, though, that admittedly, the idea of a naked maid service makes a ton of sense. If the maids clean naked, they won't get their clothes all dirty. Of course! That makes perfect sense! Why didn't I think of that? Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for refusing to speak to my sister because she wouldn't let my daughter be a flower girl at her wedding as planned, causing multiple family members to boycott it too? So, I'm a 28-year-old woman who has a sister, 26, who got married last month. I'm gonna be blunt. My sister has always been one of those people that has to have everything perfect, to the point that sometimes it was hard to be around her. But she was my little sister, and I have no other siblings, so I always made excuses when she'd hurt me when I wasn't doing things right in her eyes. I was kinda nervous when she asked me and my daughter, who's four, to be a bridesmaid in February because I knew she was gonna be a massive bridezilla. Over the last few months, we've had to practice multiple dances, pay for very expensive dresses, and put up with her tantrums. I told her from the start that if she was in any way nasty to my child, I would not stand for it. She assured me that she'd never be nasty towards her favorite person in the whole world. Well, now her husband's little cousin, who's about eight, started coming to dance practice with her mom. And my sister started to ask her to do little things like show my daughter how to throw the petals. I honestly thought that she'd make them both flower girls for a while, but when she started to make my daughter sit out and have the little girl do her poem, I knew what was going to happen, but I prayed that I was wrong. I invited my sister out to coffee a few weeks before the wedding, and I asked her what was going on. She told me that she was glad that I brought it up because she was looking for the right time. Apparently, my four-year-old wasn't doing everything right and she was afraid she was gonna mess up my vision by saying the wrong thing or not doing the dance right on the day. I told her my daughter was doing a pretty good job and everyone was always praising her. My sister giggled and said, Well, it's not their day now, is it? So it's not up to them what's good enough for my wedding. I asked her straight up if she thought that my daughter wasn't good enough to be in her wedding. She replied, Not as something as big as a flower girl, but she can attend. I asked her how she's going to break it to my daughter, who's excited about being in the wedding. She just told me to figure it out. I told her I'd give her one day to rethink her decision, and if not, we wouldn't be attending or speaking to her ever again before I left. Two days passed. I couldn't put it off any longer, so I broke the news to my child. Even though I tried my hardest and sugarcoated it as much as possible, the news still broke her heart. She cried herself to sleep. So did I and my husband. Well, after a week when I was a no-show for anything, my sister started to panic and started to get everyone to talk to me and even drop off gifts for my daughter. When I told them what happened, a good number of our family, including the bridesmaids, dropped out. We ended up going on a few weeks away with no phones. When we came back, my sister had sent me multiple letters and emails apologizing. Her in-laws and husband have called me a butthole for doing what I did. 
So down in the comments, people are not being kind to the sister and generally are saying that OP's not the butthole. Then OP posted an update. My brother-in-law saw this post and told my sister, who cried reading everyone's comments. How do I know this? Because they showed up at my job knowing that I wouldn't want a scene. They begged me to delete the post before people they knew saw it and they kept apologizing. Finally, my sister said that she might be pregnant. I told her, even if she is, pregnancy doesn't wash away all the awful things that she's done. And I hope that her husband's siblings never treats her kid the way that she treated mine because I don't want to be a part of her life. She burst into tears, saying that she was sorry and that she loves my daughter. I told her to leave before I called security, and her husband tried to talk to me alone because I was making her so upset, and everyone was cold towards them because of me. I told them no. Everyone was cold because Cinderella and Prince Charming forgot that after treating everyone like garbage that no one wanted to be in their happy ever after. They didn't like my mocking tone and raised their voice at me. My boss, who knows the situation and has a five-year-old herself, told them to leave, so she's on my side. My sister's mother-in-law reached out to my parents asking for everyone to meet up on neutral terms so we can work out our differences. I'm going to go to this dinner party because I want to hear their story and officially tell them to leave me alone. And then OP posted another update. My sister's photographer saw this post and reached out to me on Reddit. This goes deeper than my daughter not dancing right. Apparently, the photographer overheard my sister's mother-in-law and aunt-in-law talking in the bathroom. They used slurs against my daughter and husband. They called me the black man's whore. The photographer said they were both drunk, but my brother-in-law also made jokes around my sister earlier that day, which, according to the photographer, my sister smiled at. She also thinks that my family members heard it too, which is the reason why they dropped out. So, yeah, my daughter wasn't the flower girl because, unlike me, her aunt, or the other flower girls, she doesn't have blue eyes and blonde hair. If you're reading this, Sarah and Frank, F you and F your family. My child's too good to be around trash like you. Stay the F away from us, and if anyone in my family knew the real story and didn't tell me, F you too. Oh man, that story kept getting worse and worse. I, was, <laughs> I wasn't expecting the whole, sorry sweetie, but you're not white enough to attend my wedding. Our next Reddit post comes from r slash am I the butthole. Am I the butthole for telling a mom that if her kid dies, it's on her? I'm a 25 year old woman who works at a stable. On Saturday mornings, we have beginner groups for kids that want to start riding. Them and their parents gather for about one and a half hours every Saturday. When the kids have their first lesson, I teach them the first three rules that must be followed at all times. 1. No running in the stables or around the horses. 2. No screaming in the stables. 3. Never walk up or stand behind a horse. This new group had their third lesson today. Usually, the kiddos are really good at following the rules and listening to what I say. If they don't, their parents usually step up and get them to behave. But I have this one boy who's been a problem since day one. He's loud, he runs, and he's very disruptive. After the first lesson, I pulled his mother aside and asked for her to keep him calm. And if he's not listening to me, it would be very helpful if she told him off. I guess she didn't listen because last week we had the same issues. This time, I told him that if he didn't listen to me, he would not get to ride the horses. He threw a tantrum and his mother didn't help. Today, I was dreading teaching him, and I don't know if my patience is wearing thin or if he was worse than usual, but it was driving me crazy. At one point, he's bolting full speed ahead towards a horse facing away from him. Before he could get too close, I managed to grab his arm and pull him to a stop. I guess I grabbed him a little hard, because he yelled. His mother storms up to me and grabbed her son and told me not to touch him, and how dare I do this to him. I tell her that he's a danger to himself and others. She disagrees and argues with me, and at this point, I'm fed up and tell her that if he dies in this stable because he scares a horse, it's gonna be on her. She's furious and grabs her son and storms off. The other parents seem relieved about the fact that he's probably not coming back, but when I told a friend about this, she called me an effing psycho for saying that to a mom. Am I the butthole? 
Okay, so obviously there's a pretty major update coming up, and I don't know where this story is going to take its turn, but we'll do a quick butthole score and say, no, OP, you're not the butthole, because clearly what this kid was doing was a danger to himself and others. Because when horses kick, they can cave your effing skull in, man. If a scared horse kicks a, uh, OP didn't say age, so I would, I would guess like a five-year-old. If a horse kicked a five-year-old in the head, it's lights out. Say goodbye. We're talking broken bones at best, dead at worst. Then, about a month later, OP posted an update. The Monday after this all went down, my boss, the manager of the stable, got a call from the mom. She was furious and demanded her money back for the free lessons. I had explained everything to the boss before, so she told the mom that she wouldn't get her money back because she had agreed to this when she signed her son up for the lessons. She also told her that since her son was a danger not only to himself but to others, that he wasn't welcome back. The mom went nuts and yelled a bunch of obscenities before hanging up. Things were calm for two weeks before it really hit the fan. The first thing that happened was that we arrived to the stable in the morning to find that all the ponies had gotten out of their pastures. The ponies are free range. Basically, they're outside 24-7. Somehow, they had escaped their enclosure and were thankfully just grazing up in the forest close to the stable. We thought that maybe a wild animal had gotten into the pasture and spooked them? A moose, maybe? While we usually don't have wolves around here, they've been seen close by, so it's not impossible. We checked the fence, fixed it, and all was well. We didn't think much about it. Until it escalated. One night, a couple of days later, I got a call that the house the ponies usually sleep in was on effing fire. It was so scary. Thankfully, they weren't in the house when this happened, but someone wanted to hurt them. You can't see anything in the pasture at night, so whoever did this couldn't see that the ponies were outside at the time. That day we bought cameras, and notified the cops, of course, but they couldn't do much. They told us it was probably some kids doing it, because there have been fires set in a dumpster and a garden shed recently. We installed cameras and took turns staying in the stable at night. Nothing really happened for a week and a half, so we stopped staying there. A few days later, I arrive in the morning to find cuts on some of the horses. Someone had come into the stable at night and effing hurt the horses. I called my colleagues and the cop, and when we watched the camera footage, there was a man seen entering and exiting the stable. And guess what? It was the husband of the crazy mom. The police arrested him, so hopefully they both get what's coming to them. It's been a crazy few weeks, and I'm quite tired, but I'm okay, and the horses are on their way to okay now as well. What? Why, why hurt the horses because you're mad at the manager? What do the horses have to do with this? If anything, the horses did you a favor by not crushing the skull of your stupid kid. That was our slash best of Redditor updates. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.